for those of us who've been raising the alarm for the last four years that the former president's hateful comments will lead to hateful conduct, the rise in bias crimes that we're seeing across the country and in this state are no surprise. For those of us that have been saying that using phrases like Kung Flu or China virus will lead to people getting hurt. Unfortunately, what happened in Atlanta and what's happening in this state and other parts of the country comes as no surprise. For those of us like me and like you who've been told to go back home, to leave this country, those rising numbers going from 500 reported incidents in this state to 900 reported incidents in this state to 1,400 reported incidents in this state last year. Those aren't just numbers. Those are people. Those are humans. Those are lives. Those are people whose potential is diminished, communities who are afraid to go worship and live their lives freely. For those of us, as the assemblyman was talking about, that remember what happened in 1987 when Navroz Modi was killed. What's going on right now is a stark reminder of where this can lead. I remember growing up in this state when those dot busters were active, when Navroz Modi was killed not too far from here, when Asian elders were being targeted, how fearful people were to, to leave their homes or to go to their temples or to live their lives. But what we saw then is what we're seeing now, that we responded by coming together as we are today, by mobilizing, by pushing, by not being satisfied with the laws as they are. And what happened in 1987, 1988, and the year after was that an assemblyman, Bob Menendez, pushed for our state's bias crime laws, powerful tools that we are using today to hold people accountable when they attack people based on their gender, their race, their ethnicity, or any other protected characteristic. So I want you to know that I hear you. I'm here with you. I'm in this fight with you. Because if people are going to be intimidated because of who they are, I'm not going to stand for it. And we will use all the tools. All the tools we have as a law enforcement agency, all the tools that we have at the state level that Governor Murphy convened in our Youth Bias Task Force to root out this problem in our young people before it takes hold and manifests in violence. Let me leave you with this, because it's hard to find hope at a time like this. But coming together and supporting each other and being allies is a powerful step. But let's not lose hope in our young people because we can put them on the right track. Nelson Mandela powerfully said that no one is born hating another person because of the color of their skin, because of their background, because of who they are. The people must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love because love comes far more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. So let's all leave here and teach each other to love and teach our young people to love their neighbors, their friends, no matter where they come from. And if we do that, these rallies will be a thing of the past. We'll come together to celebrate our differences, not what's going on right now in this particular moment. But know that you have an ally in this state, that I'm there with you in this fight, and we're not going to stop till we root out this hateful conduct. Thank you.